Hey everyone, I am Robin the Copy Bitch. This is Stewie, my sidekick sloth. And today we are going to talk about how to write a compelling blog post. Hmm. Okay, so first of all, what does compelling even mean? You're gonna come across that term so much as you do research into copywriting and marketing. Write a compelling blog post, write an engaging blog post, write a blog post that resonates. Now that last one actually is what we want to focus on because that's the one that's related most closely to the person who's going to be reading your blog post. It puts, the, puts it back on the reader, which is good because you want your copy to resonate with someone. It's not about just being compelling, it's about resonating with your target audience. So that's critical. So I know you probably came here thinking, well, I wanna know how to write a compelling blog post, but there's not one way to do it. You have to know who the audience is, what their pain points are. That's another bit of jargon. You know, what, what are they researching? What are the questions they have that might be related to your client's company and the products and services that they're selling? And then from there, you try to come up with the topic that's going to resonate with that particular person. Like a blog post on does Lysol kill ants? That probably has like zero interest to most people who are watching this video. But for the 480 people who search on that phrase every month, they, they care. That's going to be a compelling blog post to them. I talk about this because we have a bit of an ant infestation right now. So again, when you talk about something that's compelling or engaging or that resonates, you always have to first go back to who am I talking to? Who are these people? What do they care about? What's gonna compel them? What's gonna resonate with them? Because what resonates with them might not resonate with you or me or Stewie. They have something very specific that they have questions about, need help with, wanna learn about. Now, I know some of you came here because you Googled how to write a compelling blog post. And some of you might be copywriters, but other people might just be doing a passion blog. Still, you have to think about who you're writing for. You know, even if you are, you know, a blogger who's doing like a food blogger and you're doing recipes and you're cooking and you're just, you know, doing you're writing for someone. You're writing for people who are interested in baking, who are interested in cooking, who maybe are just learning or who maybe have more expertise. You can fine tune your audience based on the type of cooking that you're doing. So, even if you are doing a personal blog, you still need to know who you're writing for and that's how you're going to create that compelling copy. Now, the only exception to that would be if you're just writing a blog to just get your thoughts down, it's more of a navel gazing diary type thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I would say that there's still an audience for that. And the audience is probably yourself. You're actually writing for yourself and what, what resonates with you and what compels you and what gets you excited. So copy always has to connect with someone, you know, and that's what you have to think about when it comes to writing compelling copy. Okay, I know you're sitting there thinking, Robin, I just wanna know some ways for writing compelling blog posts. And I'm gonna help you out, okay? I'm gonna give you five different ways to go about writing a compelling blog post, but with the caveat that you need to think about these ways from the audience's perspective, meaning your client's audience, okay? The target audience, the people you're talking to, the buyer personas, there's a bit more of jargon for you. So. Let's go back to the does Lysol kill ants example because I just think that's so funny. I think it's funny that there are 480 searches on that a month. Um, I think the real question that we're getting at here is how do you write a blog post that no one can find anywhere else? That's what I think we're trying to get at when we say write compelling copy, write engaging copy. Well, your client runs their business and they have competitors and Let's take the pest control company, the, the killing ants with Lysol subject. Any pest control company could write a blog post on that question, does Lysol kill ants? They could write a blog post about that. And you know, if you read, the, if you line up all the blog posts for five different pest control companies answering that question, they probably would all sound alike. So that's not compelling. I get what you're trying to go with the whole like, tell me how to do something special that no one can find anywhere else. So. The thing that might be different, or the thing that is different, are the stories. Like, you know, let's talk about ABC Pest Control Company. They are the only ones who can talk about the couple who bought two cases of Lysol to try to attack their 
ant problem in their house and then as a result they now have a house that smells like mountain breeze Lysol and they have a bunch of high ants walking around taking over the house okay I made that up but you get the idea only the pest control company has their own unique stories that you can bring to life in a blog post and you won't be able to find that elsewhere because the stories are more than likely probably unique to that company so that's a way to write compelling blog posts and that's my first suggestion is find those stories and that involves sitting down with your client having a freewheeling conversation because they're going to have them if they've been in business long enough they're going to have funny stories they're going to have heartwarming stories are going to have like oddball stories and if you're dealing with the owner of the company they might not necessarily have those stories so find out who in the company would you know it might be a salesperson or maybe it's someone you'll you just ask there are going to be people in the company who have the stories about the pain in the butt clients or the funny clients or the weird stories or they were called out on a sales call to deal with this that's the stuff you want to capture because that's the stuff that is different that you're not going to be able to find on a competitor site. And you can weave that into a, a blog post and then get to the heart of, you know, answering that question about does Lysol kill ants? But you're starting it off with an interesting story that's compelling, that draws people in, that engages them. And then you get to the, to the heart of the answer and hopefully they'll read to the end and be like, hey, this company sounds like they know what they're doing. I'm going to give them a call. So another way to find interesting nuggets to put in your blog copy to make it compelling, look at the client's Google reviews or their Yelp reviews. Hopefully they have some. They might not. But you know, if you're working with a company that's been around for any amount of time, they probably do. Go there and look at the four and five star reviews because a lot of times the reviewers will actually, you know, kind of serve up some interesting stories or an interesting nugget or an interesting phrase. And you could actually do like a curated post of like, here are some of the funniest, you know, five star reviews we've gotten or something like that. And you can feature them. So you're kind of like promoting the fact that you guys, you know, that your client's company does really great work. But then you could also have like comments from the salesperson who handled the sales call or the technician who went out on site to handle the customer's issue. Whatever it is, depends on, you know, whether you're dealing with a product company or service company. But you get the idea. Look at Google reviews because they, they can be a treasure trove there or places like Trustpilot or Captera. It depends on what type of um, business your client has, but there are plenty of review sites out there that can be a treasure trove for interesting nuggets or that might spark something like a customer story or something like that. So that's another idea to come up with a compelling blog post angle. Okay, here's here's <laughs> here's a blog post idea. You could write the we effed up blog post. Now, you got to be careful with this. I'm not talking about, you know, a mistake that your client made that could result in litigation or anything like that but some and you, you need to be able to turn it around too but maybe there's some sort of lesson that they learned or mistake that they made or just maybe there is a heartfelt you know hey we we messed this up but now we're working hard to get it right and we're taking a pause and here's what we've done it's not going to be the most like happy happy rah rah blog post but it can be a really great blog post to build trust with your audience um, and just, I mean, gosh, I would read that blog post, a company that comes out and says, you know what, we messed up guys. And here's what we're doing about it. And we just wanted to update you. That's, that's compelling to me. It might not be compelling in the way you were hoping. <laughs> like I think people think compelling and they want happy and I don't know, unicorns and rainbows. Sometimes compelling is just honest. And I think companies that are honest and transparent, I know that's a fine line and there are legal issues and everything like that, but I think that can be really awesome, engaging, compelling copy. And obviously that's not something you're going to be doing every week or every month, but when the time is right, you know, write that blog post. Here's the thing with any type of blog post like that is you always want to make sure that you have several eyes <laughs> read through it. Um, if you need to have legal counsel read through it, you might need to do that. You should always sleep on these sort of blog posts. Like you don't just like write it and publish it or have one person look at it and sign off. Like you have to think about it, but it can be a really, I think, worthwhile blog post to do. I'll see if I can find some examples and always check my descriptions because I include links to the full blog post I do on the topic and then you'll usually find further information in there. So if I can find examples of what I'm talking about, <laughs> I will include them so you can see what I mean.
Okay, another idea that's a total flip side, heartwarming stories. Those are always, you know, crowd pleasers and compelling and engaging and resonate. So those heartwarming stories, it could be customer related. It could be employee related. That's always good to shine the, the spotlight on your employees because you're still talking about your business, so that's good, but you're, you're showing the people who work for you and it makes the people who work for you feel good and valued. So a urology practice that I do a lot of writing for, I did an interview with one of the physician assistants who did a mission trip to Malawi. And that was a great blog post. You know, it, it showed, you know, her passion for what she does. It talked about that. She had pictures. It was just like a really nice feel good piece that gets views. And we could put it on her bio page so that people, you know, prospective patients who were possibly going to see her could see what she was about. So that can be a really nice nice piece any sort of heartwarming stories about customers or employees or employees kids or you know charitable organizations that your company is involved with those can always make for compelling blog posts because again it's going to be unique to your company to your employees people aren't going to be able to find that on a competitor's blog okay so another thing you could do is the contrarian point of view you're never contrary are you no 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 so what do i mean by that so you gotta be careful with this too, but here's an example I can give. So again, that urology practice that I do writing for, a few years ago, the US Task Force on Prostate Cancer Screening came back with its recommendations and the urology practice uh, CEO disagreed with them. So we did a blog post on why he disagreed with the recommendations and he's, he's right, like you should screen. Screen, if you are a guy, get screened, get a PSA test. You should do that once you hit 50, unless you have a history, you know, in your family, and then you should do it earlier. That's the end of my little PSA on that. So we did a blog post on that, and that was great. So that's a contrarian point of view. And, you know, he wasn't contrarian. He obviously is a doctor and knows what he's talking about, but he basically responded to this, and that was a great, great blog post. Compelling, something that we shared on social media, something that we can continue to share. So you can think of that contrarian point of view, especially if it's industry related. If there's something in the industry that, you know, maybe it's some sort of a piece of like legislation that either your, your company is for or against. It could be either way. Again, you wanna be careful with that. Here's the thing, if there's anything that's <laughs> political, you definitely wanna be careful. We, we live in such a polarized um, society right now, I don't have to tell you that, we all know. And you have to be careful. I mean, it depends on, you know, if you're, if you're pushing that envelope and you're putting that out there, just know you might get some backlash um, and be prepared for that and be prepared for how you're going to respond to that. So just something to keep in mind. Okay, so there you have it. I gave you, I think, five ideas. We talked about those special stories, funny stories, oddball stories, um, humorous stories, the real life stories that only your client can talk about or the people within the company about customers, about you know, something that happened that's just amusing that kind of helps demonstrate or illustrate whatever the topic is that you're talking about in the blog post. So that can be really good. Look at the Google reviews and other review sites for nuggets that people are talking about that maybe you can pull out and turn into a customer story or just highlight or do a curated post of like, you know, maybe five reviews related to one particular service tech who's just awesome and they all say the same thing. That could be a fun blog post. And again, something that people aren't gonna be able to find anywhere else. That could be compelling and engaging and resonate. The we effed up blog post, you know, the apology blog post, the, hey, we got this wrong, but we're gonna do it right blog post. That can work occasionally. You don't wanna overuse it. You wanna think through it, but that could be quite compelling. The heartwarming stories. We all love heartwarming stories, right? So there's, there's no shortage of that. You just need to make sure that you, you know, round up these stories Encourage your employees who are doing cool things, fun things, interesting things, the charities they're involved with, the mission trips they, they take, that they are, you know, you have to make sure they're comfortable talking about it. If they're not, you know, don't force them to do it. But if they are comfortable talking about it, have them talk about it, maybe do a video, get some, you know, pictures. That can be a really great blog post and a nice break on a blog that just talks about a lot of business related stuff. So to have that heartwarming human interest type piece can be a really nice way to go. And then the contrarian viewpoint, you know, um, that point of view that might be different than what everyone else is talking about, or that's a little bit different than, you know, what the industry is doing, or maybe it's just someone who disagrees with, I don't know, you know what I mean by contrarian. So think about that. That can be a compelling um, blog post and resonate with readers, but always be careful with the contrarian blog post and the uh, we effed up blog post. Make sure you have several sets of eyes on it. Think it through, sleep on it before you hit publish. 
So there you have it, how to write a compelling blog post. Make sure you start with your audience. Don't get caught up in the word compelling because what's compelling to you might not be compelling to your audience members. Always frame that from your audience, your audience's point of view, and you will be in good shape. So hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up because that helps us out. If you didn't, just move along. I am Robin the Copy Bitch. This is Stewie, my sidekick's lost. We'll see you next time. Bye.